Hi, I'm Rob Dom, and this is my very first video in collaboration with Winding Road, and what a perfect video to start this whole series off with. What we're doing today is working on my new daily driver. Now, before we get to that, those of you that may not know me, I do run a YouTube channel, uh, and when I'm not crashing Lamborghinis, which everybody loves to assume, which is kind of true, because I have had my Lamborghini <laughs> crash twice, but that's one of the more infamous things I'm known for. Uh, I'm also a very big rotary engine cultist. Absolutely love those engines. So, kind of a little bit of bio about me, but what we're working on today is my new daily driver, a 2011 Cadillac CTS-V Coupe. This vehicle is under the knife for quite a few reasons. It started out as a stock 2011 CTS-V Coupe, but you can see I'm going to mat out with Expel Stealth the entire vehicle. Uh, I am leaving the wheels more of the chrome. I think that's a beautiful sort of alloy color. But my dear friend Francis over at Dynamic Illusions is in the process of installing probably the coolest headlights you'll ever see on a Cadillac CTS-V. The reason why is he put a lot of extra effort into my personal set. You will see these um, if you have visited, because we'll have this video probably launch after Autorama, but you'll have seen these at the event at Detroit's Autorama. So, I'm in the process of getting a new carbon fiber raised hood. Something just, a, you know, it's called a sleeper model. It's, it's a little bit taller, but uh, nothing too crazy. I don't want to go um, too wild. I'm also installing a front APR, front uh, carbon fiber splitter with those cool little uh, braces that hold it down as well as side skirts that are trimmed out in carbon fiber. In the upcoming months, I'm going to be sending this vehicle off to Lingenfelter to get a, a little bit of a juice upgrade. We're adding about 80 horsepower at the, uh, at the crank by installing a larger pulley and uh, doing some before and after dyno. So you'll actually see those videos as well on my YouTube channel. So let's take you on an inside view of what it's like to actually install Expel Film. Not just, oh, the nice, beautiful, finished product, but the process as well. I definitely hit it with just a nice quick wax because I'd recently washed it, but it's, it's got some water spots from uh, actually Expel Gel um, on other spots. So it's not dirty, it's just not clean. Now, most of the time people will, um, recommend not to uh, use a quick wax, but in this case it gives me a little bit more time to slip it, especially with this being uh, the stealth wrap. So it gives me more time to work with the film. So I'm, I'm actually pretty pleased with having a nice little light wax on there. Expel Gel has um, alcohol in it. So the alcohol kind of counteracts the quick wax feel. Oops. This car's got about 29,000 miles on it. So you can see some of that if you're really close. I don't think the camera's gonna pick up how much detail <laughs> in black paint. But you can see some of the poor washing techniques in the past. But like I said, the, the stealth wrap actually will conceal all of that. So with this stuff, this is the actual gel. This is a mixture of alcohol and other heavenly magical properties. And what this will do is give you enough time to set the film on there and then slip it around. You'll hear the term slip agent a lot. And it's just giving you that chance to Move the film around, line it up the way you want to before you squeegee this juice out. You won't see that in, uh, a lot of people ask, is, you know, is it like vinyl to install this stuff? It's a little bit more complicated. You've got uh, vinyl, which is something you can install dry, expel, and any other paint protection film, you install wet. Uh, what I'm going to be doing here, though, is I'm purposely overspraying because as you're setting the film up, you might get it, you know, an inch off to the side, and then if you don't actually spray the right surface, it'll stick to the wrong surface. So, yeah. so I'm going to hand this to my lovely assistant, <laughs> Francis. The <laughs> first thing I'm going to do in this case is make sure my hands are clean because that's the first thing you'll see is you'll end up seeing fingerprints all over the film if you don't do that right. Okay. So my hands are all wet. That's the only reason I'm touching the film, otherwise it'll leave marks. So what I'll have you do is grab there and then go further down the roll. Okay. 
Yep. And then grab a second spot. So I'm going to go ahead and set this on the, the paint. Now, give me just a second before you keep pulling. I'll grab the bottom area here. So you don't want this film to stick on itself. You don't get much opportunity to fix that. <laughs> but, okay, give me just a second. We're going to straighten it out in the car. And there we go. So now we got a good start here. Go ahead and start pulling the, you just pulled the, yeah. I'll grab the actual film. So, yep, stop for a second, sorry. Just correct it. So normally some people will spray the film and that's probably the, you know, an easier way to do it. But you, know, when you got a smaller operation like this, take what you can get. Okay, give me a second. So that sound you don't want to, you don't want to hear. <laughs> not doing anything bad, it just doesn't sound as proper. Okay, go ahead and keep pulling. There. Okay, you just worry about the back, you can use go that one. Grab the back one. There. Okay. So, it's gonna look like a complete mess when it's first down there. And what I'm doing here is giving it just enough liquid to really slip along the surface. So whenever you hear you know, that kind of scratchy sound, that's just, that's just not enough liquid. You could install it like that, I wouldn't, but it's not gonna give you the ability for the liquid to all fall through. So an area like here, you can see it's kind of stuck a little bit. Definitely need more, more juice. So uh, what's particularly important at this point to notice is that this film just barely reaches the edge here, but it falls short over here. So you, you'd think that this is um, inadequately cut. That's actually not the case here. Expel film will stretch. This is a 60 inch wide piece of film. This will stretch, I think, I know it's more than eight inches, but at least six to eight inches longer um, without compromising the film. So in this case, I used the width of the widest roll and you can see it's the door is just half an inch, an inch longer. So what I'm gonna do, especially because of this emblem here, is I'm actually gonna tack the film down back here and gently stretch the film to cover the remaining area. So at this point, you'll see that there's a lot of goo behind the film. And the film on the surface is dry. So one of the things you're gonna to wanna to do just to make your life a lot easier going on is get as much of the air out of this as possible, only because it comes back to bite you. So you can see the film's not gonna wrinkle here, that's just because I'm pushing the, the air out. I'll go ahead and move over here and just keep petting it until it's happy. So, if I was to use my squeegee right now, it would catch on the, on the surface of this and probably cause tears um, or just other unpleasant issues. So what I'm gonna do is spray more of the gel on the surface of this. So you got gel on the back side, gel on the front side, and we got gel party <laughs> everywhere, um, but that lets the squeegee do its work. So what you're gonna notice is up here, the top edge of the film, I'm gonna use this to my advantage here. Because this is matte, and you can see how, see how it's like got, you know, a matte surface, almost a satin sort of surface, it's gonna be obvious if it's not lined up. So on this top edge here, I'm going to line it up so that way it rolls just that last little bit over. And this is really, you can see kind of, if you, we waited a little bit while we were getting our cameras ready, but you can, you can hear it sticking just a little bit, but that's okay, you, know, you got a little bit of work uh, room into here. So I have to unfortunately create more air pockets to get this lined up, but you can kind of see I'm getting that top line to where it can fold over just fine. So if this area right here, you can tell it, it doesn't have as much fluid as you'd want. I'll 
work with that though. So following that top line, just get it kind of tacked into the right spot. I want that little bit of a half inch edge on this one because the handle is right there. So I don't have much room to work with. Um, on most customer cars, I'm ac you, would, you would actually cut this like right along the edge. On my car, I'm gonna wrap it because uh, I can afford to have it fixed if, if it does come back up from grabbing it or whatever else. But if I was gonna, you know, this stuff's warranted for like 10 years. So I would, you know, cut it on a less aggressive spot. Okay. Let's just get that last, last little bit right up there. So what I'm doing is checking. I can still see a little bit of the gloss. If I go too far, it'll actually peel back up because it's touching the plastic on the back. Um, and that looks pretty good right, right about there. So start, oops, of course. Starting from about right there, I'm gonna just gently make kind of a starting line. Very gently. So, how's that look? That looks pretty good. I'll grab some more gel. The surface because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a straight line down here so that way I can pull the rest of the film over the logo so that it doesn't bunch up around the logo and I have another extra bit of film to make it all the way to the edge. So keeping this spot in mind, I'm just going to start a nice space to work with. Now again, the air bubbles I, that were kind of necessary um, are going to come, come back out. Now, one of the most common issues you'll have, if, especially beginning film, uh, but in this case, I just have this air bubble I want to show you, is lift lines. Expel gel and expel film is really good at not having those lift lines. So you see that little bit of air pop, pocket right there. Peel it back up, hit it. Now, if you get air under there, like that, I'm just trying to show you some cool examples. If you get air under there, which I didn't squeeze that, but if you do have air like that, you can peel it back with expel, kind of work, work it in just gently and squeegee all of the air back out. But you can very quickly see why um, it's important to get air out of this before you start squeegeeing. You do not want that trapped under the film. So let's go ahead and keep moving. So we got a lot of little air. Now you can hear my hand kind of getting caught up on the surface because I don't have any goo on there. Okay, so as I was with this line down the side, just bring that line straight down. Very important to make sure you overlap like that, doing it kind of odd, but just for the camera's sake. But you want it to overlap. Otherwise, if you go too far, you're gonna have that sort of problem. So, very important there. Now. This is film. This is not uh, this is not a piece of metal. So you can notice on this line here, a straight line can end up being very curved if you're not careful, and a straight line can actually be curved if you are being careful and want it to do some fancy things for you. So in this case, I'm just trying to get it just a little bit more, just so I hit that spot right there. Again checking how far it rolls over the edge. And things are looking pretty good. So, you can see that, that light line right there. So, with almost any film, you're definitely working off of a leading edge, an edge that you want the film to conform to. Otherwise, if you start working off in the middle, you end up pulling it and then you've got the weirdest things going on. So this is my, this is my true line. And you can see, look at the film's already sagged. That's a good thing because the film is actually, um, you know, I have enough slip agent to let the film move. If I, I guess if I was to let this thing sit for an hour or so, it would uh, fall off the car. So something 
um, I gently did here, but you don't ever want to do with uh, expel film, is pull it like that because the film will stretch and you'll get exactly what you asked for and you, the film will actually um, bend to your will. So you see I'm just kind of gently palming the whole thing, getting that line back up to where it should be. So this is where it becomes more of an, an art than a science. Okay. Some of the biggest areas of concern. Oh, there's, yeah, there we go. Stick it back right where it needs to be. Some of the biggest areas of concern are going to be edges. These sort of angles where they pop out, you're not. You, those aren't that bad. But the ones like down here, see this air? That's a, that's a line in the body style. That's a very common belt line, well, a bottom belt line on cars. And not only will you get air trapped in there like that, but you'll also get fluid trapped in there if you're real quick. And see how the squeegee doesn't get in there? People will often get excess goo left in there. So let's just finish up this top line. Again, right back there, you can see there's that plastic line of rubber that you, if you push the film too far back, the film will actually hit that rubber and bounce back so you'll create an air pocket again. So there's a nice, perfect balance here. So just to show you, um, in this case, I kind of went over a, a spot and created an air line. Small, super small. Now this is, this is more of a tech tip than an actual customer install issue. Really small ones will actually absorb into the adhesive. So this is the most extreme that I would ever even remotely consider letting occur. Anything more than that and then you'll actually have air stay in the film and you have to you know, address that one way or another. Now I'm going to have to pull this back up anyway just because the edge is not to my liking. So you can see how easy that's still pulled back up. We're going to get some. If you use just a uh, alcohol based product, because this has alcohol um, I should say, if you're just solely alcohol, rubbing alcohol, um, you will hear that film just stuck on there really hard and doesn't give you much room to correct and perfect what you're trying to do. What is really nice is this film, the stealth film, makes it really easy to tell. It gets all distorted when there's uh, water under there, whereas clear films are actually a little bit more difficult to tell if there's water underneath it. So you can see how it's all distorted right in there. Okay. I just wanted to show this part. I, I have a, a line there where I've, uh, it's a firm line back there. What I'm gonna do is gently get a nice, see you can see how much this film really responds. Get it away from the, it's, you can't get most of that, you're gonna have to cut around that because we we'll have to, but I want to get that locked in kind of right there. Again, I have to run with the top line right here. So I'm just kind of feel that out. Let's see, well, that's perfect. That is a sexy belt line. Make sure it's all right in there. Okay. So can't let it sit for too long, otherwise it'll start conforming back to its original size. But we'll start locking this side in as well. You can kind of see, I don't know if you'll catch it with that camera, but you can definitely see some of the moisture on the outside and uh, later on some of the moisture on the inside. What is that? Huh. Interesting. I'm going to peel that up real quick because I can't tell if that's a paint issue. Oh, weird. It actually was a, something on the paint. So this is the real side of actually installing this film is, you know, if, if you care about it, you know, people pretend like it goes really quick, but if you actually care, um, 
you're going to be really focused on making sure you don't have any lift lines, any of that sort of stuff. So shit. I don't know, I might as well just pull this all up. I can try and work that over, or I can just respray the whole thing and call it a day. So. So now we've got the center area is down because you know, the whole film has weight, has mass, so it's pulling it down. We've got that line locked in, that side locked in. So we've got our distance met. Now we'll go ahead and set the rest of this top line. So again, over, overlapping is very important, especially when you have to have multiple start points like this. The film does give you a lot of t uh, leeway, but you're not always going to want to test that. This is um, this is where Expel actually really shines compared to 3M. 3M is meant for. Uh, a very seasoned installer. So anybody that's just starts installing, they'll get stuck and they'll just trash the film. You only get like one shot at it. It's, it's good stuff. It really is good stuff, but this is where Expel really shines for new installers. Okay. Review that line. That's a pretty sexy line. So you can definitely see um, one of the very important things is you see all that extra fluid that's coming up. If you don't address that, it'll keep sinking right behind the film and you'll get that whitish area where there's, it'll let air in, oddly enough. So your goal once you start really setting it, especially on edges, is to get as much liquid out from that as possible. Naturally, this is the best part of the whole thing is you've got the film set, you just want to rip through the rest of this and that's where you start making some serious mistakes. Let's get that big air bubble at least out of the way back down to this belt line area. The film's a little dry. There we go. So. You can see right here, if I was to just start where it's black, you'd miss that whole pocket of, of liquid down there. And we'll start from the area we know is good and continue working it down. This is truly the most gratifying experience though, because you can do the most amount of good in the shortest amount of time and effort. Again, that's, that's the area where you need to be concerned where I've already got a line down there. I don't want to start moving air or any other fluid in there. So, look at that. You can see it's starting to come together. This is, so much fun. This is, <laughs> this is really a lot of fun. Yeah, so that's, that's a perfect example of a spot that will absorb into the uh, thing. So that is, that is air, um, but Truly, that's actually a very minute amount that'll, it's not worth the re pulling it back up, it'll all disappear. But here, you'll see like that's, a, that's an imperfection in the paint that the, the paint's chipped because this is a 30,000 mile car and it, that will show through the, the film if it's too extreme. So look at that nasty air, you want to make sure keep that on that side of the squeegee. So then we're gonna, this is the area we have to watch out for right here. Take smaller swipes for this reason. There we go. So I stopped right above the belt line, this bottom, well, I don't know what you call this, pant line. <laughs> but I stopped right above it, because again, it's got a lot of air. 
needs to be taken out. This right here, um, it's a bigger, flatter uh, emblem. So a flat, big emblem, you can actually work with compressing the film into that little spots. If it's a small, taller thing like a, a vent on the hood and you don't have pre-cut holes, you're gonna probably wanna take them out and uh, reinstall them. Okay, so. As you can see, I'm going straight down to really get inside there because this way it won't touch at all. But you can definitely tell in the matte film, you can definitely tell if there's bubbles in it. wrinkling there that needs to get more fluid out. Until we cut this out, there's gonna be a pocket of fluid down here to be very aware of. So you probably wanna have an area here or um, expect to push it back up once you cut the film. See all that extra fluid right there? That's truly one of the most like enjoyable things to do. Because now you got this beautiful line right there. And there's where there's where it's lifting up because there's extra fluid in it. I want to be very careful not to push that fluid down into it. Okay, so in this case, you can see I haven't actually gotten all the way to the edge of the emblem. I wanted some room to work with, but this being a metal emblem, I'm just gonna catch it just that, the f closest bit inside because it's pulling the film out. So as soon as I cut it out, if I was to cut it to the very edge and push it down, it may or may not actually um, go all the way to the emblem. And be being that this is a matte film, the matte film will show the glossy underpaint if I cut too aggressively. And really the real nice part is that the emblem actually has kind of like a little uh, lip where the adhesive is. So you can tuck the edge of the film in and just walk away. So we'll get it right there. Get a nice little edge going right there. Now if it's like a, um, a real soft plastic emblem, I would actually think about taking it off and reapplying the adhesive. Um, it's actually a 3M uh, sticker, uh, double-sided tape, double-sided automotive tape, and I'd put the emblem back on. But this one's actually a pretty healthy emblem. Now I'm just hitting the film just enough to score it. It's hard to tell how much pressure I'm giving, but I'm not hitting it to where it's cutting the emblem, just scoring the film. This is very, 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 very thick film. So it's got three layers too. It's got the self-healing layer on top and then the polyurethane layer in the middle. So I'm trying to hit those layers. And then lets me peel and break off the last layer. So I should be able to find the edge. And just give it a little tug and it might break loose. Break. Yeah. If it breaks away too easy, you know you've uh, cut too deep and you shouldn't be doing this. You can see some of it just trying to fall, fall off. There we go. Now in this case, it's because this is the matte finish and it's my own vehicle that I'm being a little bit more aggressive on this. Um, I would I would not be this aggressive with a customer's car. But I have a certain look I want. I want it to go right to that edge. And so you can see it's right, it's tucked right in there. Now this is one of the most gratifying parts is you can see the goo coming out and the film's getting tucked in. 
underneath there. So I'm gonna have to cut this bottom edge. You know, you can see look at the, the right there. You see that extra goo. I'm gonna get a lot of it out. <laughs> look at all that goo. So, just like moving the air out of the initial install, getting all the goo out of this install, um, leaves a lot less room for error. Otherwise, it's gonna keep peeling up. down just a little bit so what it, this little orange thing is is it's a that's a harder metal or <laughs> what this little orange thing is it's a kind of harder plastic so it's still something to be careful with it will cut the film if you go at it the wrong way but it's perfect for getting a nice edge tucking film in and uh, you know, using it in a variety of very useful ways so this is going to keep coming up until I actually make the full cut down that side I've stopped right there. So we'll go ahead and look at that really coming together. And that's as that, as that fluid comes out, you start seeing it really come alive without ever getting close to the paint, and you're not actually touching the emblem either. But some shops will rush, cut hard, hope you never take the uh, paint protection off, and you've got a little presence waiting for you underneath the film. <laughs> so in spots like that where you can see the air coming back up, it's actually not air that's causing that, it's actually the, the fluid underneath it. So the goal is to get as much liquid out from under there and address whatever's causing the issue to lift up right there. So I, I probably have a little bit of excess film right on that edge and so it's hitting the emblem causing some pressure to pull the air in. The bottom line is something that you have some liberty over because people can't see it. So what I was doing is I was using the edge of the blade, the side, running it along the emblem, and actually just cutting the film without pushing down on the emblem. And away you go. And here comes the, one of the most gratifying parts. <laughs> So then we'll spend a lot, about the same amount of time getting those last little details, but you can see it really coming into, coming into its own right there. And that's most of the way done. So that's a behind the scenes look on how Expel is actually installed. You know, some people skip some of those steps and just show you a finished product, but it is really a labor of love. Got a couple more steps left. I'm gonna trim up the bottom once the, uh, the adhesive cures a little bit more. So that way I have a, a, a stronger surface to work with. So you'll see the rest of the vehicle being covered in the next upcoming videos. And you're definitely gonna hear that supercharger whine. So until the next video, I'll see you guys later.